Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and welcome to my weekly trip to Purgatory. So once a week I try and solve one of these extreme level puzzles uh, live on the channel um, which uh, can make these videos very long um, because we are trying to solve logically the puzzle. I'm not going to guess, I'm going to try and use the techniques, some of them are quite advanced um, in order to wade through it and that, uh, as I say, my brain isn't clever enough to do this quickly so apologies if this turns out to be some sort of magnum opus. Um, now this puzzle has been sent in by Niranjan uh, and he has provided us with a few puzzles over the months uh, and even years that the channel's been running and I know for sure that uh, if this puzzle stumped him it's going to be fairly brutal. So what we'll do is we'll start off with standard notation um, by which I mean that where a number can only go in exactly two positions in a 3x3 three three block, uh, for example the 8 in the middle here can only go in these two positions, um, I'll pencil mark that. But I'm fully anticipating that um, that's not going to be enough to get through uh, one of these puzzles and I will have to resort to more extensive notation at some stage. So without further ado, let's start clicking through. We have four here, four here, and this four here. So I get to place a four. Um, it's fours. I'm just going to start liberally sprinkling the grid with pencil marks. So six, six, and this six here. This must be a six. Um, well, if we look at the central column, actually, we need the numbers 2, 3, and 7 to complete the column. We have a 2 and a 3 already in row 5. So this square must be a 7. Pencil mark 7s into those two positions. Now this 2 is nice because that locks a 2 into one of these two squares. So this square here is going to have to be a 2. And therefore this down here will be a 3. See this two now and this two interact on this three by three block, allow me to place twos into one of those two squares. That gives me another number now because twos in this three by three block in theory could be in either of those positions except for that two down there. So we get that two into the grid. Twos, twos. This must be a two. Um, Feels like we must be close to being able to fill all the twos in. Can't quite see how to resolve this one down here. Bother. Uh, okay, well, let's not spend too long on that. Uh, let's have a look along. Oh, hang on, this square. This square, what can this square be? So, all I'm doing, by the way, there is I'm comparing the contents of the column with the contents of the row and noticing that there is not an exact similarity in the digits I'm seeing. So I know that this square must be restricted. You can see it can't be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 9. It can only be an 8. Let's plug that in. 8 must be in one of those two squares. Uh, I need 3 and 5 to complete this row and there's a 3 here so this is going to have to be the 3. Therefore this will be a 5. So we're looking at 5, 8 to complete this box. 5, 5, oops, 5's into one of those two squares. 8, 5, 8, ah, 8, 8, and then well, this square must be an 8 up there. actually made quite reasonable progress haven't we? We've got quite a lot in the grid already. So let's check column one again. So we need one, seven and nine. Hmm. So this is a one or a nine this, in this position. This is a seven or a nine. Can't see anything better than that. Two, seven, four, eight, three, Ah, three here, three here, and this three. So I get to place a three in that square. Four, 
four, six, eight, nine. This square is very limited. This is a four or a nine. This is an eight or a nine. So at some stage soon, I'm probably going to have to switch pencil marks, I think. I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes of staring just to check I'm not missing anything that's going to be more helpful. Um, five, five, and this five here. That gives me another number. I can put a five in there. Uh, five, five. Ah, now, important sometimes. Sometimes it's easy to miss this when you're going too quickly. I nearly missed it there. But look, there's five pencil marked into one of these two squares. And that means that when I look at this three by three block and the fives interacting here, it's not possible for the five to be in this square. So it must be at the top there, which means that's a five and that's a one. Um, so. Ah, okay, and now these twos are better, aren't they? Because now I've got this five in here, this two here, and this two here, force a two into one of those two positions. And therefore I can place the two in the central box. Must be a two there. And twos. One, six, seven, nine across here. So this is a one or a nine. Seven. Oh hang on. Hang on, there's a pair in this in this central box. So this square we've just identified can only be a 1 or a 9 because we managed to eliminate the possibility of a 6 and a 7. But the contents of row 4 are very similar. So this square, what can this square be? I think it can only be a 1 or a 9. It can't be, can be a 1, can't be a 2, 3, 4, 5. Can't be a 6, can't be a 7, can't be an 8, yes. So there is a 1, 9 pair in this box. So we're missing six and eight. In, ah, and there's a six here, so this must be a six. Six, eight, in that order. That resolves the eight and the five. Um, five, five, fives into one of those two squares. Six, six, six into one of these two positions. Um, and we're left with fours and nines into those two squares. Now, I, let me just look at this for a second. Three and nine at the top. So that there is a skyscraper there, isn't there? Let me just show you what I'm noticing. So there's a four nine here and a four nine here and a 3-9 here, and a 3-9 here. So if we look along rows 1 and row 5, we have this interesting situation where the 9s are locked into exactly two positions in both rows, and they interact with each other in these two squares. So we know in the finished grid there'll either be a 9 here, and a 9 here, or a 9 here, and the 9 here. And the place we, we therefore need to think about is up here, because any square that can see this square and this square cannot contain a 9 in the... Um... Now this square obviously is one such square, so this can only be a 2 or a 3 I think. I think that's right. Nine. Sorry, I'm just absolutely double checking this because I don't want to mislead you guys. Yeah, that's right. This cannot be a nine. And also this square can't be a nine. Let's just check the contents of this square. So one, oh, it can be a two, can't be a three, 
Okay, we have four. Yes. Five, six, seven, eight. So it can only be a two or a four now because it can't be a nine for the reasons I mentioned. Same reasons as, as this square can't contain a nine. So there is that skyscraper feels like it's quite powerful. Um, now what I'm going to have to do though, if I'm going to start fully pencil marking things in, is I'm going to have to now start removing the Snyder notation that I have been using because otherwise it just gets too cluttered. So I'm going to just do that now and that way we'll be able to think about this a bit more clearly. So this square can be 2, 3 or 9, I'm just going to put that in. Over on this guy we're looking for 3, 7 and 9. Again, I can't see any ways of restricting those options. Down here, we're looking for 7, 9 to complete the column. 7, 9. Ah, and there's an X swing. There is an X swing. This 4 is interesting because if we look along row 8, where can a 4 go? It can go here. Can't go in either of these two squares because of the 4 here, and it can't go here because of this 4. So the fours are locked into one of those two positions. And that matters because, well, hang on, I've just noticed the threes are locked into those positions as well. There's three here, three here, and three here. So that's mirroring the positions of the fours. So in fact, better, well, there is, there's still an X-wing, uh, but there's also a three, four pair. So... Now, can we eliminate either of those down? I'm just going to check the rest of um, row 8. We're looking for 1, 5, 7, and 9. So this is 1, 7, or 9. 1, 5, 9. Ah, 1, 7, or 9. So I was hoping we would do better than that. But we must check this X-Wing as well. So what do I mean by an X-Wing? Well, it's a bit like the skyscraper, actually. If we look along row 5 and row 8, there are exactly two positions in both of these rows that the 4s are locked into. And here, rather than them being offset, as they were with the skyscraper, they actually match exactly in both column 3 and column 7. Now what this means is that in the finished solution, either there will be a 4 here and a 4 here, or there will be a 4 here and a 4 here. Now you may say, well, why does that matter? Well, the reason it matters is that when we look at these columns, column 3 and column 7, there cannot be any other 4s uh, other than the ones I've just mentioned. There's, because effectively, it's going to be a 4 here or here, and a 4 here or 4 here. So for example, in this square, it's not obvious to me how we would eliminate a 4, except that we're able to because of this X-Wing. So let's check this square. What can this square be? It can be 1. It can't be 1, actually. No, it can't be 1. 2, 4, 7, or 9. 2, 7, or 9 now. Um, OK. <laughs> I can't see how to make use of that, which is a bit frustrating. Let's check some other cells in this column to just check whether or not... The problem is this square is so unrestricted at the moment, I can't think that's going to matter. Let's check over this side as well. This square, which... Uh, there's already a 4, though, so it's not really going to be impacted by the X-Wing. Um, 1, 6, 7, 9. Again, yeah, no good. No, OK. So maybe the X-Wing isn't as important as I was hoping it would be. Is there anything else we can do down here? Um, and the answer is yes. I'm sure. I'm really not sure. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm missing something here, which is the most frustrating thing when you're doing these live salts because um, so 
threes, threes. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Yes. I can't do anything with the X-Wing, but I can do something with an empty rectangle. So, what, you may ask, is an empty rectangle? I know those of you who have uh, been following the channel for a while will be very familiar with this technique, but... Okay, so this three here actually is very important um, because it has the effect on column eight of limiting the threes to exactly two positions and so often when we're solving advanced Sudoku puzzles it's this limitation of single numbers to just two positions in rows and columns that is the whole key to unlocking the logic that can solve the puzzle and we've seen it already here we've, we've, we've noticed it with the skyscrapers that we found the X-wings that we've found and now with the empty rectangle that I've just found. So the fact that threes are locked into one of these two positions, it allows us to do a couple of things. We can look for X-wings, we can look for skyscrapers, but we can also look for the empty rectangle. And the empty rectangle is an interesting animal. So if we look down here at this three by three block, you can see that with this three here, in effect, we know that there is no three in any in this two by two square. There cannot be a three in this two by two square. And therefore, I know that the threes will either be along here in row seven, in one of these two positions, or they'll be in column three in one of these three positions. Obviously, if it was in this square, then it's in both the horizontal and the vertical, but it, it won't matter for reasons I'll explain. Now, why am I interested in this arrangement of threes? The fact that threes are locked into a row or a column. Well, the reason I'm interested is that these, believe it or not, affect this square. And they affect it because of the impact of this strong link between these threes here. This is a strong link in the sense that if one is not true, the other must be true. So, what are the options? Well, one option, if we come back down to this square, is that the threes are indeed in this vertical column. Now, if that's the case, I get to eliminate this three. If it's not the case, and the threes are, well, let's imagine this three was true, well, what happens? This three cannot be true. Therefore, there's only one other position in column seven, that, in column eight, sorry, that can contain a three, and that's this one. But if this is a three, this can't be a three again. So either way round, we eliminate this three from this square and we get to write in a two. Now I'm hoping <laughs> that is gonna be useful. Let's see, I'm gonna be careful with it, not polluting my pencil mark. So I'm gonna get rid of the empty rectangle threes down there. We've now got three nine here. Um, and a 7-9 pair here. So this 4-2 resolves itself like that. Two things immediately result from that. The fact that I've got this 4 in means that the other 4 in the X-Wing must be true. So I'm going to get loads of stuff from this. Um, this 9 is true. This 3, 7, 9, all of that must follow. 9 and 3, that must follow. Um, and now I said that the other side of the X-Wing must be true, therefore this is a 3 because we knew this 4 and 3 were a pair. And all of a sudden, things are looking good again. So, and now we know there's only two positions for a 3 in column 8. This one must therefore be true, using our empty rectangle logic. And suddenly the puzzle, I mean, I'm not saying it's solved, but it's looking manageable, isn't it? It's looking like we might be able to do it. So four, eight pair to complete column two here, which means we're looking for one, seven, and nine into these positions, like that. There's lots of one, sevens, and nines in the puzzle. <laughs> and this must be one, five, nine down here again, 
can't resolve that yet. Let's check this column now because we've done some work on it. So we need four, six, and seven. Four and seven here. Six and seven here. Ah, six and seven here. So is that one? Yeah, this must be a four. This is this is one or seven. One or seven. Um, this must be one or six then. One or six. One, six, seven, nine along here. I'm sorry I'm being slow here, but I, I don't want to miss out on something that's really obvious and I getting a, that sort of sense that I might be fives. Ah, this has to be a five. That's good. That eliminates this five. This must be a five. The one and the nines are locked into two positions here. Again, this is exactly, you'll have heard me, I keep doing this. I'm looking for numbers that are locked into two positions. And then I'm trying to use that fact to my advantage. Um, not quite seeing how to do that there though. Let's carry on with pencil marking this block. I think that's the only thing we've got left to do. So we've got a one and a six down here. And one, seven, eight, nine down here. So uh, that's annoying. And hang on, fours. This four here resolves the four and the eight. That uh, would do if I had any ability to put the right number into the boxes. 8, 8, so this is an 8 up here, uh, which means I need 1, 6, 7, 9 into, 1, 7, 9 into this square. Okay, now the other thing I've noticed is when you get to this point, you can normally chain the logic uh, to finish the puzzle. Um, you know, we could, we could force it, we could brute force it. Now, I don't want to do that, um, because the point of these videos, these these extreme puzzle videos, is to is to find something logical that we can talk about and explain. Ah, okay. I show you what we can do. We can use empty rectangles again. So this time, let's look at um, row four. Now, row four, there are only two positions a seven can go into: this one and this one. Now let's look at this 3x3 three three block. Where can 7s go? And the answer is they either go along the bottom in this row or they point upwards. Now, so let's look at the effect of that on this square. In fact, I've just noticed how this is going to matter. We're going to finish the puzzle now. I'm going to show you how. So, if the 7s are going along here, we get to eliminate this 7. If, on the other hand, the 7s are vertical, this won't be a 7, therefore this is a 7, and therefore I get to eliminate this 7 again. So either way, the empty rectangle, the fact that this 2x2 two two block can't contain a 7, and the fact that there's a strong link between these two 7s in row 4, forces this not to be a 7. Now, th th there may be another way of doing this, but what I then noticed is we've now got a bent triple because this is our old friend the Y-Wing. It's not easy to see this one, uh, not as easy as sometimes anyway. These tend to be much closer together in sort of physical proximity when you spot them most of the time. But let's have a look at the numbers 1, 7 and 9. You can see 1, 9 here, 7, 9 here, 1, 7 here. And the critical thing, it doesn't matter about the gap, between these things. The critical thing is that this square, the so-called pivot square, sees both this square and this square. So let's have a look at why this matters. It matters because whatever I pick here, I'll force a 1 into one of the wings of the Y. So let's do that and show you. So if this is a 9, obviously this square here will be a 1. If this is a 7, 
this square here will be a 1. So we get to use this lovely logic again where we're able to say can we find cells in the grid that can see both this square and this square because if we can find such a square it cannot contain a 1. So this one can't contain a 1. Ah, I thought I thought that was going to crack it, and it doesn't. Oh, that's silly. Um, uh, okay, but we can do, we can, <laughs> right, we can still crack it from here. It's just more complicated than I was thinking. We can now use another skyscraper, because now let's look at ones in column 9. Ones are locked into this square and this square. And the ones that we've, I think I've already mentioned these, in column 6 are locked into this square and this square. So again, we've got two options for the ones in both of these columns. And look, they interact in these two positions. And that means that if, for example, this was a 1, we would know this was a 1. If, on the other hand, the only other possibility for ones in row 4 is that this would be a 1. And if this is a 1, this will be a 1. So again, what we're able to do is hunt in the grid. Is there a square that sees this square and this square? Because if there is, it can't contain a 1. Well, this one can't contain a 1. And finally, I think we're there now, because now we have a 7-9 pair in row 8. This can't be a 7 or a 9 now. And we get to write a 1 in. And that, I predict, will crack the puzzle, because... I don't think, I'm sure there were about a thousand ways to do that there. Uh, and I apologize if I've just picked the, the worst way of showing you. Um, but I did want to spot something that was not some huge long chain. And I think uh, I did at least achieve that. So now this should be a one if everything's working. This should be a one. And hopefully this is a seven. And there we go. That's an extreme Sudoku solved in. 27 minutes. I know it's a long video. I'm really sorry, but I hope for those of you who are newer to the channel, there was something there that you've not seen before and that you can implement into your own solving. Um, if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. We're trying to grow our numbers um, and we believe the YouTube algorithm sort of you know, likes us more if you give us a thumbs up. So if you did enjoy it, please do that. That would be most appreciated. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.